Okay, we're going to talk about three massive trades. We're going to talk about the Chikrin trade uh, to the Ottawa Senators. We're going to be talking about the Jonathan Quick the Jonathan Quick trade to Columbus. Not the Gabrikov and the Corpusala going to the LA Kings. No, we're talking about Quick going to the Columbus Blue Jackets. As well as Hironic going from the Detroit Red Wings to the Vancouver Canucks. So you will see me. I mean, you're going to see me. I'm switching to my jersey for sure when we talked about, about the heroic one. So, anyways, let's jump right into it. We'll jump right over to the uh, the viewer hook. We were talking about, again, the Jonathan Quick. So, we'll start with this one because this is the most drama, and this is this is a big one. I'm actually pretty excited about this because of what's going to happen. I'm a little excited. I'm a little sad as well because of the icon who was Jonathan Quick with the LA Kings. Uh, and so, we're going to jump right into it. So, let's, let's start with, with Jonathan Quick. So going over Jonathan Quick, his stats are like the reason. One of the reasons they're trading him is because one, he's expensive. Uh, you can see right here the cap hit being five point eight, uh, and he's a UFA, so he was going to be expiring as it is. Um, and you can see, I mean, clearly, look, at being with the Kings forever, he won them Stanley Cups. He was a Conn Smythe winner. So this guy is a he's he's a gem. So the way that they did him dirty was really bad. I mean, they were flying home from I mean from a pretty bad game. And they found out that he was not, he got traded. And it was kind of, he felt blindsided, which is the bummer. You do, really, in my opinion, you know, players, you know, they, they get paid a lot of money. I understand that. But you do treat, treat them like humans and say, hey, man, there's an, you know, Rob Blake should have said, hey, uh, there's an opportunity where we potentially may be trading you. We're not sure, but I just want to let you know. Just kind of give him, like, let him know, not let him be blindsided. And it's just very frustrating. So, but you can see if we go down to 2022, 2023, um, Right here, you can see a 0 .8, 0 0.8876. That is not good. I think he's a bottom 10 goalie right now. I mean, Nadelkovich is probably has a higher state percentage than that, and he's in the AHL. He got waiting, and no one claimed him. And he, only, he only makes $3 million. And they said, nope. Red Wings are like, nope, we're not keeping him. So he's, he's borderline unusable. Essentially an AHL goalie, I would say. So there's a re that's the reason that they moved off this contract. It's expensive, and he was not playing. We knew that he was not going to be, be good enough for the playoffs to be playing at this rate. Not saying that he hasn't played phenomenally. As you can see, some of his records, he's had great save percentages. percentages. Look at this. 11-12. Look, he's willing them through the, the playoffs at this point with the point, uh, .928. So, anyways, so that's where we're going with Jonathan Quick. So, let's, let's jump over the condition as well. So, we're talking about the Columbus Blue Jackets picking up Jonathan Quick, essentially picking up his salary. By the way, it, the uh, what we are hearing is that they had to take on Jonathan Quick's salary. Uh, that was part of the deal. They they had to. So um, now they are getting the first round pick out of this. Um, conditions being that if they do not qualify, the Kings do not qualify for the, the playoffs in 2023. Columbus Blue Jackets will receive uh, two second rounders. Uh, the LA Kings second rounder in 2023 and the second rounder in 2024. Uh, just to let you guys know that. What I've been told is that on a normal draft, a first rounder or two second rounders is is equivalent of one first rounder, and then two third rounders is equivalent of one second rounder. Just to give you an idea of where, so this is still good value, um, but we know that the a second rounder in twenty twenty three is even even more impressive than a first rounder in 2024 is what I'm hearing as well. So it's, you know, you want to get these picks. Getting more stabs on the board is great, but 2023 is really where you want to get as many picks and as high as picks as you can. So, of course, they want that first round draft pick then, <laughs> of course. So, uh, and they also get a third round pick out of this as well, just just probably sending over another piece. So I imagine that the, the first round pick, takes care of Gavrikov, the third rounder takes care of Jonas Corpusala, and I'm glad that, so by the way, just so you know, the first rounder and third rounder is, is right there, just those two, that's what they wanted for just the Columbus Blue Jacks wanted for Gavrikov, and I think that was very expensive, and I'm going to show you why it's so expensive for you to pick for, for Gavrikov for that, so it is, he has 10 points in 52 games. On a terrible team, by the way. Also minus eight. No, that's not the biggest deal. I know plus minus is not the biggest deal, but he he's never been a star. He, he's a plays defense, but he's he's a fine defenseman. But he's he doesn't he's not amazing, right? And he's a UFA at the end of the year, so they don't have any, they don't retain any rights. So he they were asking for the moon, and I'm glad they didn't get everything that they wanted because that was just honestly it was ridiculous. By the way, also LA Kings could have had Jacob Chikrin, but. They decided to pass on him and, and, and you know, for lack of a better round, dick around with uh, 
Arizona Coyotes. I'm gonna swear because that's, that's my first time swearing on this on my videos so far. So they were dicking around with the Arizona Coyotes, and now Chicken's been scratched for a couple a couple of weeks. I mean, we're gonna talk about that. That's even crazier. By the way, they got they did, they did not get the value that they wanted either. So, but Gabrikov that was way too expensive. I think it's fine. I mean, he's a fine defenseman, but if you had an option between Gavrikov and Chikrin, um, Chikrin being that he's younger and locked up for longer, I would have taken Chikrin. I would have taken the price for Chikrin. So, again, I think this is more of a desperate move, unfortunately. And you ruin the reputation. You ruin your reputation by moving quick like that in a shady fashion. And I know that he, quick, by the way, is coming out for blood. He is pissed. He told Columbus, hey, I don't want to play for you guys. I don't want to be there. Trade me to a Stanley Cup or a contender in the playoffs. It is his last year. He's 37. It's his last year. He probably won't play next year. I know he wants. He think he. I think he's thinking about it. If he's not playing next year, like he wants an opportunity to the cup. So right now, there's. Well, I keep reading that there's serious talks between Vegas and the Columbus Blue Jackets about getting quick, which would be sick. Let's let let this. I would I would lose my mind if this happened. So you think about this: you have LA Kings in the Western Conference making the playoffs. So then, of course, then Columbus gets their first round pick, which is great. So um, you're going to get Seattle, boom, Seattle over there too, as well as Vegas in the playoffs. That would be crazy. Imagine if LA, who trades away Jonathan Quick, has to verse Vegas in the playoffs. I, ooh, it makes my skin chill. I'm so excited, and that would be. Awesome! That'd be the best, one of the best revenge games I've ever seen. You want to see Jonathan Quick get on his toes and you want to want to show what he's really got? That would be a series. I I'd pay for that series. I'd fly to LA. Let's go. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen because just because the way playoff for, format works, but we'll see. A man can hope. A girl can dream. Uh, and so the last piece we're going to go over is Jonas Corpusala. So let's jump over to the, the other side. So we got the Columbus Blue Jackets playing with the Columbus Blue Jackets up and down from the AHL. We know he struggled last year. So what ended up happening, you can see, is again, a .877 just struggled last year. And so uh, Blue Jackets like, hey, we'll give you another, we'll give you a one-year contract and just try and see how you can do. By the way, he's doing quite well. .913 right now, that is uh, above the save the average save average in the uh, NHL. Because scoring is up so high right now. So that was a good pickup. Um, and, and automatically, because Jonathan Quick has moved out, and you have Phoenix Copley, an older veteran goalie, um, in for the LA Kings, he does take now Corpus Allen is taking the start, starting position for the LA Kings, which which is something that you don't typically see. People, player, or teams usually shore up their backup, but they do not typically shore up, a, they go out and get a starter because it's just risky because you're not sure how, how they're going to play with their style uh, of the team. So. Uh, by the way, I, sh I do want to show this one thing. He is, look at this! Look at this mustache. It is that is pretty, pretty. That is pretty. So, um, anyways, I'll, I want to jump over to the next trade that we're going to talk about. One of the other big trades. We're going to skip skip product for right now. Uh, I want to talk about Jacob Chikrin. So, let's go over a couple of these pieces right now. I'll pull up Jacob Chikrin's card. So, Jacob Chikrin. Here is the trade for. The Arizona Coyotes to the Ottawa Senators. You can see Jacob Chikrin go moving over hit that contract. By the way, Jacob Chikrin is locked up for the rest of this year as well as two years after this. So at four point six, so that is a great deal. I mean, his salary does go up. I think next year it's five million. The year after that's seven. So that is real dollars. But the cap hit is less of the concern. Now the Arizona Coyotes did said that they. They would retain, but they did end up not retaining on the pick. So that why that's why you got lower value when it came to this. They were asking for three first rounders or two first rounders and a uh, a first rounder level prospect. So they were asking for the sun and the moon. And by the way, he's I'm I'm so glad this saga is over because Jacob Chicken has been in trade rumors for the last like three years, and so I'm I'm just glad it's over, honestly. So let's jump into don't jump into real quick. Um, so they, so the Arizona Coyotes did get their first rounder right. It is top protect, top five protected uh, in a great draft by the way. Um, and so if again if it, if it doesn't happen, then it gets moved to twenty twenty four unprotected first round. And for the second rounder, they get Washington's second round pick right. Uh, and then the condition being that if it if they make the Eastern Conference Finals, which by the way they're not going to. They're potentially going to squeeze in at a wild card, but there's no way they're going to make it past Boston and past Toronto or um, uh, Tampa Bay or any of that. They're just, they're just not going to happen. It's, it's not going to happen. I'm, I'm letting you know. They're not going to get past Boston and the likes of Toronto and Tampa, who all three of those teams 
are complete powerhouses in generational teams. I'm I'm so excited. It's unfair they're going to get knocked out so early. So I'm um, looking at you, Toronto. Um, and so so again, that, and that one is top ten protected, right? Uh, if that happens, uh, if like I said, most likely it's just a second round pick. Um, and, but again, if it does t- top ten protected, yeah, it, like I said, it's going to stay a second round pick. Uh, and like I said, and they get also the additional 2026. By the way, 2026 is three years out. You have 2023 draft, 24 draft, 25 draft, 26 drafts, right? That's four drafts away. Three years, four drafts away right now, which is crazy that they're that Ottawa is doing trading picks out that far. And so with that, again, like I said, you kind of think of it as hey, two first rounders, two second rounders is equivalent to first a first rounder. So you kind of see they got the two. Um, so, but Arizona definitely didn't get three out of this. They didn't get a prospect out of this either. And also, I want to add, we can go to their cap friendly page. They have the amount of picks that they have is stupid. I think they have. Uh, I heard someone say over the next three years. So look, look at this. I think they have. Uh, let me let me count real quick. I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay, I just counted. They have thirty five draft picks in the next three years, right? Which means. Which is crazy, by the way, because you typically you get you get one for each round, three years, seven rounds, twenty one picks. That means they picked up fourteen different picks, uh, which is wild to me. It, it's it's a, it's very impressive. Look at all these second rounders. It's crazy that they were able to do this. Um, but good for them. By the way, what I imagine what they're going to do with a lot of these picks is they're going to use them and they're going to they're going to pair them with other picks to move up in the draft so that they can get better draft picks. So they, all these a lot of these second rounders and everything. They're going to try and use those to move up in the first round of this draft or or next couple drafts just to get better, get more high quality draft picks. It, when, when you have this many picks, you're trying to get not just a, a lot of stabs at the board, right? Like they have a ton of stabs at the board. They have a ton of dice they're rolling with all these picks. But you want to get uh, quality ones uh, for these picks. So that's why you want to move up in the draft to get a little bit op- more opportunity. So um Let's go. So we're, going, we're we're talking about the Jacob Chicken Chicken real quick. So you pull up his DB page. He was injured this year. He did get back. He's only played thirty six games. Mind you, he's been out for three weeks already. I think it's like eight games he's been out because uh, again Arizona was, did it for trade related reasons. Um, and so, but during the small time that he was playing, look, he's at twenty eight points in thirty six games, a plus eight on a terrible Arizona team. Again, and he's locked up for a while. So I think this is a great pickup for the Arizona Coyotes. Um, their right side is looking phenomenal. I think they have it's, it's uh, Shabbat, uh, Chikrin, and then Sanderson. So looking great, looking awesome. So this is this is a great trade. Now the crazy thing, I'm going to jump over to the trade. This is now we're going to move, we're going to go on the Red Wings trade. So like I said, I'm going to, I'll, I'll be right back. Don't you worry, I'm coming back. And the last fun trade, by the way, got to trade it. You can see I changed out for the video. Had to get in my Red Wings gear for this stuff. So by the way, we'll be talking about Larkin's contract in a little bit too. So check out that video. So here we go. So we have the Red Wings. I didn't know that he was on the market trading Philip Peronic. So they traded Philip Peronic to another team who is not who is contending, not contending. They're not even going for the playoffs. They're a rebuild they're a retooling team as well. Um, to the Vancouver Canucks with a fourth round draft pick, Detroit's fourth round draft pick. Coming back getting New York Islanders first round draft pick and a twenty twenty three second round. By the way, this is the crazy thing. This is uh, this is where I'm I'm a little bit blown away. Um, one, I did not know they were trading Heronic. Two, I didn't know they would get a first for him. Second, I didn't know they'd get a second for him. The fourth rounder is like less consequential. I mean, especially when you're comparing a second round and a fourth rounder. I I thought that I thought the Red Wings paid got a great haul for Heronic, who by the way is locked up for next year too. You can see I got his his cap friend up here, locked up for the rest of this year and next year. Um, again, shocking. And, and oh, here you go. You can see again. This is where the salary comes into handy. This they're offloading. The, offloading the contract and he makes more than his actual cap hit so he's actually making about 1.1 million dollars next year on actual dollars not cap hit actual dollars that the Vancouver Canucks will owe him so that's important to note um by the way and by the way Phil Peronic doing phenomenal this year you can see he actually he's tied in in 60 games he tied his his goals in the Red Wing or in the NHL he's and he's tied his uh, his career high on points as well. So next game, he, next points he gets, he's over on the points. Next goal he gets, he's over on the goals as well. So good for him. Uh, I I hope they're really happy with him. I really like Tronic. He's an offensive defenseman. Again, doing really well. 
and we saw that with the Red Wings with the, the two losses. We didn't know they were going to go into sell mode, but we knew that Bertuzzi was kind of back on the market because of that Geno trade. And so now you're seeing that, you know, now that Heroic's gone, I mean, in my opinion, that Bertuzzi's gone. They're, a lot of them are gone. Um, and, of course, one of the cheeky thing that Eisman does is that he signs, shows, hey, I signed Larkin, the captain. Hey, we got him for eight years, 8.7, great. And I trade Philip Peronik an hour later. So very cheeky of him to give such great news and then such uh, crappy news. But, again, they are officially sellers, so this is uh, more of an indication of what they're going to end up doing, in my opinion. And th that's in my opinion. I think that they're trying to get as many assets as they can, especially with how deep the draft is next year. Or they're going to be taking some of these picks, and they're going to be trading them and getting um, someone like uh, Colton Pareko out of uh, out of St. Louis or some along those lines. But I think I, we do know that Eisen's very fond of building through the draft. We saw that with Tampa Bay. He built that team up and then left in April for them to go win the Stanley Cup in, in uh, June. So we know that he likes building through the draft. That's how you end up getting cheaper, cheaper players as well because they're more willing to take a hometown dis discount. And if they're looking to sign the eight years, they get that extra year. So that is one of the benefits of, of building through the draft. So, again, this is a crazy pick. By the way, this is the one of the reasons I wanted to emphasize this is that you can see that Philip Peronik – I mean, he got traded for a first-round pick and a second-round pick, right, 4.4. 4, 4. If we go to the Jacob Chikrin trade, you can see it was a first-round pick and a second. So right there, that, that's exactly what Heroic was trade, traded for. And then plus another second. Maybe that accounts for the extra year that Chikrin has. But it's crazy that Heroic gets almost a similar value. The only difference is that... Uh, you know, sign her for an extra year and you get a second round pick out of it. So that's that to me that is kind of crazy that that's that's what I was talking about with with Chikrin not getting the the haul that he should have. Um, and but I guess I, that's where Arizona gets for dangling him out there for so long. Um, and then uh, you know, being like, oh, we're gonna trade him, we're gonna trade him, we're gonna trade him three weeks later, we're gonna trade him, and finally they, they trade him. And again, that's kind of uh, karma, I'd say. So again, this is a great, great day. I mean, so many more trades, but I want to hit some of the major ones. Um, so because YouTube, I posted so much content yesterday. YouTube's like, hey, I think we, we think you're a bot. So you, you, we're, we're not going to promote your videos. So that's all right. Like I said, I, I made them. They're going up. And I'm, I'm just having fun, man. So, um, so I said, let me know what your thoughts are. Hit like, subscribe. Uh, comment and let me know what you think and, and uh, are you happy with these trades are you happy with the chicken chicken trade if you're any kind of a fan let me know i'd love to hear the comments and uh catch you soon love you bye